Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, I'm Nick, and in this video we're going to be putting back together the Honda CT200 engine uh, that we tore down in the previous video. I'll put a link to that video right here-ish. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Here's the combustion chamber. You can see that there's some corrosion inside there, some rust, and there's little bits of carbon flaking off, so I'll clean that up with a brass brush. Uh, this is the exhaust valve, and it should be nice and uniformly shiny all the way around that, that ceiling edge, and it's not. There's um, some carbon deposits, and, and it's just generally dirty. Um, so I'm gonna clean that up and lap the valves. Luckily, the valves aren't hanging up at all. That's the exhaust valve, moves nice and smoothly. And the intake valve, again, nice and smooth. Now this engine does not have valve seals, so that's one thing I don't need to worry about. It just has these valve guides and they look to be in pretty good shape. Here's the rocker box that's on top of the cylinder head. Uh, you can see two little access windows here for adjusting the valve clearance. The uh, valve stems actually come in contact with the outer portion of the rocker arms and the inner portion, this little pocket right here, is what interfaces with the push rod. Here is the piston. I took a little bit of Scotch-Brite and I cleaned up the, uh, the scoring on the, the piston just to get rid of some of the high points of those scratches. Um, but other than that, it looks perfectly usable to me. I did get some new rings. This new set of rings has a more modern style three-piece oil control ring. So you've got the chrome ring that goes on top got the second compression ring and you've got these two little oil scraper rings that are separated by this this uh, corrugated ring that goes between them so let's take a look at how these fit in the cylinder bore I would imagine we'll have to do some hand finishing
So I don't know if you can see that, but the gap between the ends of the ring right there are much, much closer together than the rings that we pulled off. Already that looks very good. We're at about 14 thousandths of an inch, which is on the upper side of what it should be, but it should be perfectly fine, especially considering what came off of this engine. I'm using the piston to push the ring down a little bit just to make sure that it is square with the bore and not sort of crooked. That looks good. With the rings gapped, it's now time to install them onto the piston. I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. One thing to note is that this piston doesn't have any of those little nubs sticking out in the ring groove to locate where the gap for the ring is. Um, so I'm just going to sort of stagger the gap around the piston. I'm not sure if it actually stays where you put it or if it sort of rotates around um, but at least that makes sense to me so there's the oil control ring on and you can see the corrugated uh, spacer ring goes between the two scraper rings now onto the compression rings you can see one is chrome plated and the other one is this dull gray finish the dull gray one goes on the bottom and the chrome plated one goes towards the top of the piston
Well, I'm pretty happy with that, especially considering the weather we're currently having in Ohio. It's about 25 degrees right now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, I would appreciate a subscribe and a like. Be sure to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I make a new video.